What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be going over the ECU Tech or ECU Tech app, however you want to say it. Um, the actual app, we're going to go over the features that you get when you get the Bluetooth dongle that allows you to control certain functions from your phone and also see quite a few things like temperatures and things like that, be able to clear your codes, be able to uh, do data logs right from your phone um, using the Bluetooth dongle. So uh, with that, it's such a powerful tool that you have it right on your phone. I mean, everyone uses their phone these days, so it's very convenient. It does come at a price, but other than that, it's very useful. So let's, get on, let's go over some of the features that we have on, on this um, ECU Tech uh, Bluetooth app. For starters, when you guys first fire up the app, it's going to appear like this. You do have three basic functions. My car, which takes you to the main dashboard, that allows you to see every single feature that you have available under ECU Tech for your particular vehicle. Um, the My File section will take you where you can save your data logs and save your DCT reports for your codes, uh, saves the report. And the Dealer Locator simply is going to help you locate a dealership that has um, ECU Tech or the service that are offer tuning, any of that kind of feature. So, um, other than that, let's start with the My Car section and we're going to go over every single one of those functions that has to do with in uh, this particular vehicle, which is the VR30 3.0T from Infinity. All right, from the main menu, we have various options from info, dashboard, data login, map switching, boost controller, custom inputs, DC, DTC tool, OBD readiness, performance analyzer, and tire pressure measuring system tool. Now, um, we're gonna keep it simple, start from top to bottom. Uh, the first tab, I'm not gonna go into because that has my uh, VIN number, and for privacy purposes, I prefer not to open that up. As you guys can understand, I'm sure you guys wouldn't do it either. Now, uh, my favorite section, it is the next one, the dashboard. All right, so here we are in the dashboard screen, which is certainly my favorite because I can keep track of a few things that I need to keep track as a car guy. They're essential to me. Um, of course, I have fuel pressure um, coming from the low side, the boost, which tells me my PSI. Um, if you guys want to know what parameter reads the boost, is your manifold gauge pressure um, and oil engine pressure, obviously, um, oil engine temp, your uh, water pump. When the engine is actually um, not on, your water pump still runs at 10% so that's why I have it on there there's also a feature that allows you to control your water pump input um, which I'll talk about in the later part of this video but next up we have your charge air temps charge air coolant temps your coolant temperature intake air temperatures and your knock retard so I have all of those I can definitely go into one of those individually at a later time and explain parameters and ECU tech but this video is more so talking about the apps um, uh, that we want to focus on for this part of the video. Now, if you guys are wondering why my temperatures are so high, it's simply because the car has, I just came from, came home, the, ho the hood was shot and uh, the garage was enclosed. So obviously these temps are gonna go up. So um, there's nothing really going on here. The car is off right now. So you really can't even cool back down. Anytime you want to add a new gauge, it's simple. You can select which type of gauge or bar or text or chart you want to select. Um, select the parameter and you can um, customize even the name from from there you can customize the names uh, at what certain point at the bar the gauge you want an alarm to go off change the color many ways of customizing this this is 100 percent customizable which is very nice indeed and this is what it looks like when you're still editing and when you select done it goes back to where the way it was but more on this um, parameter parameters that ECU tech has for everyone in a later video again I just want to kind of go through some of the features of the app Next up on the list, you have data login. Um, now, I kept talking about parameters. This is a list of all the ones that are I have selected on, on this car. And it, this is kind of like a default list. This is not my final ones that are always data log. Um, I always change them around based on what I'm looking for in the data log at this time. But um, pretty much what you can do, anytime you hit the start button down here, um, and then when you hit stop, it records a file into, um, essentially can be opened as an Excel file and be sent to your tuner right away. From that first section that we talked about under my files which we'll get to later in this video but this is how you send data logs um in ecu tech it's very simple it data logs all the parameters that you want to data log and send them off to your tuner so that he can make corrections accordingly especially for you guys that are being tuned remotely um, this helps you a lot all right map switching so let's get into it and i'll talk about it a little bit so this car is uh, alpha tune ams um, it does have four maps it's got an eco map uh, which really limits your throttle input um it's got a low boost setting medium boost race uh 93 so it is on pump gas right now um the race map you guys are all, i know i'm gonna get this question so i'll go ahead and answer it the alpha tune race is around 20 pounds of boost um it's around 1.7 bar it's what it's what it's meant to hit um obviously it's tapered off 
um, towards Redline like most tunes are, just so you guys are aware. Um, but yeah, I do have different boost settings if I want to take it easy, take a low, medium, race, obviously. But the race map is kind of one of those maps that you get addicted to fairly quickly. As you guys can see, I have it on right now. And I, I just went to work and back on my race map. So it's 100% safe. Yes, it's 100% safe. Um, but yeah, if you ever want to go on a long drive and just kind of relax and chill, you do have an eco map option. You also still have your drive mode selector to even, you know, intensify that quite a bit. So just keep that in mind. Next up, we have boost controller. So um, on the four maps that we have, this is essentially locked out. Yes, you can mess with it um, with your boost controller, but it's really not going to do anything. <laughs> um, the way it works is based on your tuner's discretion. This screen is locked out to prevent you from doing anything stupid, uh, which I'm glad I really don't touch this screen. Uh, some of you guys who maybe have, have more experience on this screen, please feel free to comment. I don't know every single thing about ECU tech yet but I am trying to learn myself. Uh, now this screen, I just leave it alone. I know 1.7 bar is what the boost setting is set for my uh, 93 race map, which is around 20 to 21 pounds, I believe. So um, keep that in mind. Next up, we have custom inputs. Now this update came out a while ago, which you can change um, the duration of which you want your water pump to cycle up higher. Um, this technically makes the pump flow faster uh, ultimately resulting in uh, cycling your coolant through your system a lot quicker. When you do that, it dissipates the heat and allows you to have ultimately um, better temps before you make a pass. This is, this is really good when you're in the staging lanes and you've been um, idling for a while and your temps are getting hot. You can use this feature to kind of get the fluid moving before a pass so it cools down quick um, and you essentially can make your pass with decent temps. Your DTC tool, which is for your um, codes, so you can read your codes in the system, um, you can, there's different, a lot of different categories. Um, you guys may have seen this in a separate video as to why I have three chassis codes. Really, I'm supposed to have four. So let me explain. Uh, these are not any codes that affect the car any kind of way. They're just kind of like a, it's kind of like a hidden code, I call it. Um, this car does come with digital dynamic suspension and I disconnected them because I am on coilovers. The coilovers do not have a, a connection to use the um, suspension function of the vehicle that adjusts the dampening on the stock struts, obviously since we're on coilovers. Now, I do have one plug that is fried on my rear left um, from weather. Uh, it got exposed and I really fried it. So um, that's why I have three coats instead of four. It's not, it's not even noticing the fact that it's there. So other than that, guys, um, that's the only reason I really have a code. Sorry for the focus there. Got out, got out of hand. And this is where you normally would clear codes. You can clear all. And this is where a report is saved every time you get a decode uh, into your My File section, which we'll go over here in a few. Now, um, the last two or three, um, OBD readiness. Uh, this is kind of one of those ones that I feel I think is I think Correct me in the comments below because I still don't know exactly 100% what this screen does um, The system when it starts up um, The tune and the ECU when they sync together it runs through a series of checks um, On your car uh, that's what it is if you guys know are knowledgeable enough in the, enough in the comments Please let me know uh, I look that's what it looks like is running a, a series of checks um, This driving cycle hasn't checked a number of things but then since reset is, has run every single check and everything has checked off, minus the one that has an oxygen sensor has not completed because I have not started the vehicle. But other than that, that's all I know about the screen. So let's continue. Um, performance analyzer. Now this is one that guys early on, before the draggy was a thing that they used to kind of gauge the performance of the car as they were installing parts in the vehicle. You can do 0 to 30, 0 to 60, quarter mile, and a lot more parameters. Um, here's a list of things you can do. Um, even you know braking if you want to do braking you can also do that on here i believe uh yep actually no you can't it looks like all of them are going up so my, my fault guys you can do braking on this one on a draggy you can but it's in kilometers or miles um which is pretty good if you want to gauge your your uh, progress this is a good tool to use now it's not 100 percent accurate because it is not gps based like our draggy device over there um but other than that um you just hit and you run It'll tell you that it's ready if the vehicle's moving. It's going to tell you waiting for a vehicle to, um, you know, stop or something along those lines. And when you stop, you can start your test pretty much. Um, I'm going to hit abort because I'm not going to do a run. I'm in the garage, obviously. But uh, let's go ahead and go to our last one. Now, the tire pressure measuring system tool. Um, this has worked for me before. My sensors were not programmed to my car on an aftermarket set of wheels. And I went to that. I don't want to go to it right now. I don't even want to mess with it, actually. Um, so this procedure requires an external tool to activate the sensors in each wheel. 
and you won't be you won't be able to proceed without it somehow when i got a set of wheels the car did not read them i did this tool and it actually read the wheels um immediately not sure how that works um but i never touched it because i did it one time and it unplugged every single wheel from every single wheel from the car like it disconnected them so i had to go to a shop and get them reprogrammed so um like again if you guys have more knowledge on this one comment below feel free to below feel free to comment uh definitely always looking to learn some new features from the ec tech that i use every day so feel free to chime in on that one now that we finish with this uh, entire front section we can, can go on to the my file section which is where we can see our data logs so as you guys can see we have data logs performance results which is where all your uh, runs are stored um, your DTC reports and you can save defaults for your dashboards under data logs This is my favorite one. Uh, you can go to data logs These are some of the ones that I took when I was at the track recently You can select the log it'll open up from some information in regards to your vehicle your ROM your license key ID and everything like that And it also brings up another window which is very interesting. So at the bottom you're gonna have two options one is to um, Delete it and the other one is a function key So let's press that and see what happens once you press the function key at the bottom you have an option to email it um, you can even messenger the file. You can do a number of things. You can text the file. There's a number of options on here, but um, ultimately emailing directly to your tuner is efficient or whoever you want to share your data log with. That's just something to keep in mind. Very useful um, way to do it. Or you can delete the logs as simply if you want to. But the comment section on the logs is very useful for kind of letting your tuner know or yourself know what exactly that log was about. Performance analyzer, I don't keep any results on here because I use my Draggy, as I said. Um, but T DTC reports, these are all reports um, that I've kept. Uh, some of the recent ones I really don't, I, I just got to delete them out. But some of the ones with the older dates, like that one down there, I kept for a reason because it was something uh, that I needed to remind myself in case I ever need to go back and check what code it was or that kind of stuff. Um, here are my chassis codes. I was supposed to have four of those due to the one um, plug that is burnt out on my rear left. So I may have to actually source that. I want to bring that back to life but other than that those they're just hitting codes you don't have to clear them you don't have to do anything with them so i know i get this question a lot if you're on bags coilovers and you have dds system those are the kind of codes you're going to get but ignore them they you don't have to clear them you have to do anything with them now um let's go back one last time and dashboards i have my midwest hoonigan um that's what i named my default for my gauges you guys can do multiple ones for different things that you want or for your gauge screen you guys can actually um have multiple pages you can add a page um so the more if you add another gate let's say if i were to add another gauge right now i would get another page to add which is also fun um and you know you can do multiple things on the same on the same layout but me i prefer to keep things things simple and is exactly what i want to keep sorry guys if a little bit blurry but um uh, the phone is not the same as the tablet that i used to use for ecu tech functions but other than that this is pretty much uh, a decent run through, I think, of the ECU Tech app. If you guys have any more questions in the comments, um, please comment below. As always, I uh, don't mind answering any of your questions, but I do have quite a bit of knowledge when it comes to ECU Tech in terms of how to use it, um, what to expect out of it, uh, how to read codes, how to clear codes. If you guys are new to the tuning scene and have any of those questions, feel free to comment below. Or if you have a tuning question in regards to your VR30, even a 3.7, you guys use this too. Um, let me know in the comments and uh, be happy to help. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching today, and I'll see you guys in the next one.